Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regions. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 25. In the diagram below, right triangle PQR is transformed by a sequence of rigid motions that maps it onto the right triangle NML. So we're going from this triangle and then we transform it. We don't know what we did and now it becomes this triangle over here. Write a set of three congruency statements that would show ASA or angle side angle congruency for these triangles. So all we need to do here is identify angle, a side and an angle, and pronounce that they are congruent between each other, but comparing these two triangles. So so that's a, that that should be really simple, right? So we have so to get angle side angle we could we can look at um, we could start with the right angles. We could see that those are congruent to each other. So we could say angle Q is congruent to angle M. Next, we're going to need a side, right? This was our angle. Now we're going to need a side. So we can say that side QP is congruent to side MN. And then we're going to need another angle, right? So our, our next angle can be angle P and the corresponding angle can be angle N and here we'll have angle P is congruent to angle N so it's really it's really that easy as long as you know what ASA means angle side angle you should be able to identify um, something that appears like this on the triangle and you could have done this a, a different way you could have said um, you know angle R and then side QR and then angle Q as long as you go in that order, congruency statements of angle side angle. On to question 26. Diego needs to install a support beam to hold up his new birdhouse, as modeled below. The base of the birdhouse is 24 and a half inches long. The support beam will form an angle of 38 degrees with the vertical post. Determine and state the approximate length of the support beam x to the nearest inch. So we see we're dealing in inches here. We have an inch, this is inches, and then they want the answer in inches also. So this looks like a nice Soka Toa trigonometry question. So let's write that out, Soka Toa. Uh, I have a video on, on trigonometry if you want to look at that in more detail. But I'm going to assume that you know what Soka Toa means from here. Sine, cosine, tangent, and then we have uh, opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. That's what each of these mean. So looking at this, we need to find this length. We know that this is 24.5, and we know that we can use Soka Toa here because we are dealing with a right triangle. So we're given this angle here, and we want to know the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse, the value of the hypotenuse, and then this value that we're given here is the opposite because it is opposite to this angle, right? So if we have the opposite, of the degrees and we want and we want the value of the hypotenuse we're going to be dealing with Soka Toa, right so so now let's just set up our little equation so we're given the angle so we can go sine of 38 degrees is equal to the opposite 24.5 over the hypotenuse which we don't know what that is yet so now we can just do a little algebra right so we can cross multiply, you could think of this as cross multiplying, or you could just see that you, could, you have to bring this x over to the other side by multiplying. So we get x times sine of 38 degrees is equal to 24.5. And now we want to find the value of x. We're going to just divide out this sine of 38 degrees from both sides. So we could take, to find this value, we're just going to take our calculators and before you do any calculations, just make sure that you're in degree mode. So we go to mode and then you see we're in degree mode so we are good to go. And now, um, and now let's calculate this. So 24.5 divided by, so I just put a parenthesis here, sine, parenthesis sine of 38 degrees. And then we get x is equal to 39.7945 blah blah blah, keeps going. And when we look back, um, at our question it says they want x to the nearest inch so the, the nearest whole inch so this is x is gonna be about 40 inches and that's our answer on to number 27 
A rectangular tabletop will be made of maple wood that weighs, so let's just draw a rectangular tabletop first. Back to our question. So a rectangular tabletop will be made of maple wood that weighs 43 pounds per cubic foot. So the weight is 43 pounds per foot cubed, right? The tabletop will have a length of eight feet a width of three feet and a thickness of one inch. So, so this is going to be three feet and then this will be one inch. So notice everything is in feet except for, except for the width. So just be careful of that. Determine and state the weight of the tabletop in pounds. So we're going to want to find the volume of this shape and then we're going to want to multiply it times the weight because this is in feet cubed. So the, the volume is always length times width times height of a shape like this. So if we're given the length times width and height, we just get eight times three. And be careful here, because even though this is this looks nice and easy, eight feet times three feet, this isn't, remember this is in inches. So there are uh, 12 inches in one foot. So we're, this is gonna be one over 12, because we have you know, only a part of an entire foot. So just a little side note, one foot equals 12 inches. Therefore, if we want one inch, we have to put it over 12. So now we're gonna calculate this. So eight times three is 24. And then we're putting this over 12, which will just give us two feet cubed. So we have this in feet cubed, but we wanna know the weight of the tabletop. So we're gonna take two and then multiply it times that weight they gave us times 43. So when we do that, we are going to get 86 and that's our answer. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!